Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I am your host, Hani Rambod. I'm here with co-host Austin, and we are doing another Q&A. Q&A time. Q&A. These are great. Yeah, man. People love them. Yeah. Let's do it. Before we do it, make sure you guys remember, subscribe, like, turn on the notification bell above and beyond everything. Turn on your notification and then ask questions in the body of the YouTube. So if you're listening to this in your car at the gym, when you get back at home or you get on your phone and you want to go ahead and ask any questions, go on the YouTube and then we'll go ahead and try to either answer your questions right there on YouTube or I'll take those and I'll put them in the next podcast. Yeah. So we watch them all. We yep. look for them all. All right. You ready? Let's do this. All right. Will you be at the Delhi Sheru Classic this June? The Evision will be there. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it because we are going to be in the middle of construction with the new headquarters. So here in Dallas, but we're going to have two of our top athletes, Andre, as well as Sunit, are both going to be there. Awesome. And we're going to be sending the Evision, some of the Evision sales team out there. And we're going to have our partners out there. So again, Manish and Sheru have a great show out there. And if you're anywhere in India, you definitely want to be there. Because not only are they going to be there, but there's going to be a star-studded event. They're going to have a lot of other athletes there as well. well Evigen's showing up strong there. Yep. Sweet. Um, in the off-season, should we do cardio every day? Off-season cardio? Yeah. Uh, no. I don't believe in cardio every day because I do not like to do cardio on leg days. Uh, just so you can body can be able to rest up and make sure you're going to go out there and blast legs. And I feel that one of the things that people tend to overdo is if you start to do cardio every day and you are going to then get ready for a show, then it's going to be like, you got to do cardio twice a day. Yeah. Then you're going to be doing twice as much cardio. Then you're going to have to increase the frequency of the cardio because you're over already overcooking it. So you want to try to still do cardio three, four days a week, uh, maybe maximum five, especially if you're trying to get the heart health and you have a lot of body fat to take off. But if you're already in shape for maximum bodybuilding gains, you want to try to make sure you're just doing enough to keep your heart healthy and your body fat levels down. So you have but somewhere you, to go from there. Exactly. Because then when you do increase it for the prep, it'll actually do something. And you're not going to have to go straight to an hour twice a day like everybody used to do back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. Perfect. Uh, what can be a great substitute for pre-workout supplements for focus and energy? A substitute for pre-workouts? Yeah. Coffee. Coffee is the universal, you know, if there's a Starbucks or if you have some instant coffee at home or if you like to brew your coffee because you're a coffee aficionado, coffee is a great, great pre-workout because it can give you some energy. It'll give you focus. It'll, you know, cut back your appetite slightly, I feel. Can you so still that, dry scoop it? No, <laughs> I do not dry scoop coffee. <laughs> I'm a, you know, I don't like hot beverages. I like to do cold brew, just like I made, oh. you know, the ice jet cold brew. Yeah. That was because it was a flavor that I like when I go to Starbucks. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm a cold brew fan. So when I do coffee, I do cold brew unless it's, you know, 10 degrees outside and it's freezing cold. Yeah. I'll do that. Or, you know, I'll do a hot chocolate or a sugar-free hot chocolate from one of the coffee houses. But I'm nine times out of 10, I'm drinking a cold coffee beverage. So, and then again... You can sweeten it to your liking. You can do Stevia. You can do Splenda. Um, my good friend, you know, Kim Odo, who has been a coach for many, many years, who came up alongside each other 25 years ago. He was always into the pink packets, bro. Pink packets. <laughs> that's what you call it. Pink packets. And he comes from Louisiana and it was the pink packets. I'm like, bro, that's bad for you. Oh, Cancer. Like little sweet and lows or something yes, like that. Yeah. Sweet and lows. And you're always like, bad, yeah, bad, bad. Yeah. And, and then the blues became bad. It was aspartame. Yep. And then now it's like Splend is good. And then some people are like, hey man, I want to go ultra green. Let me do the green packets. So I don't know what's next. The white packets or the sugar. So I don't know what the, uh, the next color is on the spectrum, maybe purple or something. Yeah. But, <laughs> but in all in all, it's, you can, you know, obviously then coffee. sweeten it to your, your liking because some people are like, Hey, I'll drink coffee, but they'll say, I don't want sweetener, but they do sweetener in pre-workouts. So yeah. it's, there's no difference. Same so thing. guys don't freak out about it. It's not the end of the world. You can Got put it. a couple of Splenda in there and you'll be fine. There we go. All right. Next question. Dadash Mishi Farsi Sobat Koni. <laughs> you did a good job with that one. That was that was written phonetically. You're not. You can't read Farsi because I can't yeah. read Farsi. So that was all in English, right? That was in, uh, fin no. in English. No, not at all. Not even <laughs> You're close. Such a liar. You're such a liar. <laughs> I, that's hilarious. I was surprised with that one. 
Um, Dadash Misha's uh, Farsi Sobat Kuni. It's basically saying, brother, can you speak in Farsi? Obviously, we have a lot of Persian bodybuilding fans out there. And uh, there's a lot of people asking me if I can do that. I have been doing some stuff on my lives. Um, I've done some stuff with our partner, Evijin Iran, where I've spoken in Farsi and I've done some of that stuff. But I will try to do some Q and A's a little bit more often. So just stay tuned. I will sit down and I'll try to do some of those things yeah. in my broken Farsi. But um, but that was good, man. I can you had you. me. You, I can teach you. I got you. Yeah, Don't look, worry. look at you. Like, do some this lessons. Is, the guy's doing Rosetta Stone. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing Rosetta Stone. <laughs> it's Duolingo. Learning. Duolingo yes. is the modern yes. day Rosetta. Yes, Stone. and I'll actually there do a go. quick thing in Farsi here. Bayon kisayi ke darimi porsan ye kisi porsi do mi chunam bitunam to a Farsi bishtar sovat konam. Sayi mi konam ke bitunam ya inja ya tu evijen Iran bitunam ya tu channel shun Farsi sovat bokonam bitunim swalo jabab bitunim um bekonim ro un channel um, در هر صورت uh, سعی ما رو می کنیم با این uh, you know, فارسی شکسته من بتونیم uh, به شما بتونیم رای نامی بکنیم I know I'm breaking that up I'm butchering that but basically um, I just said that we're going to basically try to do a little bit of oh, I got it I got it yeah. Yeah, I picked up on all of it <laughs> you already knew <laughs> I got it you never know Farsi <laughs> now he speaks Farsi too Jesus Christ that's hilarious this is a very interesting one there is a ram truck with an no this e is what wait this is a, wait is this a question or is this? This is a question. Is a question. Okay. There's a question on the end of it, but there is a Ram truck with an Evogen de like a decal on it in Vancouver, BC. Does that relate to you? In Canada? Yeah. I don't know who that could be. No, I've got a Raptor truck and I don't live in BC. I'm trying to think who do we know up in Canada I have no that idea. has a Ram truck yeah. that's good. I mean, the only person I know that up in Canada has a Ram truck is Fuad. Fuad, <laughs> Fuad must have Fuad a just Evigen sticker. Evigen all over He's it. Got yeah. He's got sticker. a full wrap. It's <laughs> all down the side. Who is it? Who, who asked that question? Uh, this was, it's the Persian underscore king. <laughs> the Persian underscore king. The Persian king. king. No, I did not know. But anybody who has a picture of that, it, whether Persian underscore king, uh, whoever you are out there that has seen that, if you guys have seen that, definitely tag me in say, it. Find the truck. No, well, don't be, don't be creeping on the truck. But if you see the truck, yes, take, take a, a picture, picture of it, and then we can you and know, forward it to me on DMs yeah. or tag me on it. Yeah, I'd love to see it and get a tub of 3D or something. <sighs> Not 3D up there, but um, there's going to be a product. There's going to be a product launch in in Canada very soon. I'll yeah. tell you exactly what. Well, it is. I was you will they, get it if they You'll find get, the truck. If you find the truck, you will get a product. Yeah, I will yeah, get you a we'll product up there. All right. So again, <laughs> if you found the truck, the first person who finds a picture of the ram, it says it's a ram. It's a ram. It's a Ram TRX? No, nah, it doesn't say. That'd be sweet. Oh, that's the one that Fuad has. Yeah. I think, and Seth has one too. Got it. But yeah, so um, the TRX. Take a picture of it up in Vancouver. Tag me. I'll get you an Evigen product. There you guys go. saw an Evigen truck up there, a yeah. truck with an Evigen sticker on it? Yeah, that's pretty hilarious. Is it a wrap, he said? It just says it's a decal. A decal. So that could be anything. That could be a little sticker, sticker or it could be a whole truck. Guys, yeah. Remember, tag me on it. The first person who does it gets yep. a free Evigen product. I'll send them a free it's a scavenger product. hunt. It is. Yeah. There you go. Well, you mentioned Seth. Um, did you and Seth shoot any training footage when you were in Pittsburgh? In Pittsburgh, did I shoot it? Yes, we did. I have to check in with him, see when that's going to be ready to go. We did. We, we were to, able to, uh, we had to decide because my flight got in late from Dallas and we ended up deciding on whether we were going to do a podcast together because mm -hmm. um, he's got a really very popular podcast. Or we were going to do a workout session. And I think what we decided was that, hey, look, with the limited time we had, let's get a workout in together. Yeah. He hasn't done any bodybuilding workouts in a very long time. So we ended up training chest with Mr. Ferrosi. And uh, I got him to pose a little bit. Oh. He still got it, man. He's not as big oh, as he yeah. was, but he's yeah. still badass. Yeah. He's a badass dude, man. And uh, we, it was great. The vacuum we, is nuts. Yeah, yeah. He's got the vacuum. Yeah. He's got just, you know, seeing him just mature and what he's done. It's one of those things that it was a, it's always a great time with Seth. Yeah. And we go way back from the beginning of his bodybuilding career and being able to just talk about old times, train, talk about all the craziness going on between the end and now. And, uh, it's just been great. There was a lot of things we touched on. So as, as soon as that video is ready, we talked about work and family and all kinds of stuff. But as soon as that's ready, I'll let you guys know, I'll go ahead and tag, um, uh, you know, tag him and put posts about it and repost it once he's ready to, to launch that. I'll find you, the person who asked the question, I'll send you the link. I got you. There you go. Yeah, directly. You won't miss it. Um, next question. Should I take Brain Builder if I'm taking EVP3D? You can. Absolutely. I do it all the time because 
EVP 3D doesn't have any caffeine, but it has nootropics in it. Brain Builder has 100 milligrams of caffeine and creatinine phosphate, as well as a lot of neuro, you know, you're going to get a lot of that, the neural pathways firing. So you get focus and it just, who wants, you know, you can never have too much focus, yeah, right? Exactly. Especially when you don't have a lot of stim. When you have a lot of stim, then you feel like, okay, I'm focused, but I want to crawl under the table and yeah. like you start shivering, yeah, right? All it's time. just too much. <laughs> you just do that anyway. You do that exactly. anyway. It's just normal. <laughs> it's, just, it's just any given Monday. Um, but yeah, so I, I absolutely, I use it all the time. I usually use it in the morning and then sometimes I'll take it in the afternoon. Right. But it, but the way that it's dosed out is 33 milligrams for Brain Builder per capsule and then three of them is a full dose. Mm -hmm. And then I take all three either in the morning and sometimes I'll take it with EVP 3D just because I want a little bit of caffeine, Yeah, but I don't want anything that's going to keep me up. Oh yeah. The other day I had Brain Builder, 3D and AQ together right before a workout and it was just phenomenal. Yeah. That's a like really great mind muscle connection and everything. It felt so good. Yeah. So definitely great recommendation. Um, what made you stick to being a coach um, over being a bodybuilder? Me getting hurt. I mean, if you haven't heard the story... It was like 2000. It was right after my last show. And I had just went on a vacation with a girl I was dating. And then the, one of my friends that was also a client of mine as a thank you, had sent me a trip to uh, Mexico. And I was like, oh, you want to send me to Mexico? He goes, no, we're going, him and his wife, we're going to go to Mexico. And he says, why don't you uh, come over and go with us? We're going to go and whoever you want to bring along. And the girl I was dating at the time said, okay, great. Well, the girl I was dating at the time just happened to be about 5'10". And she was dancing and we were at El Squid Row. And if anybody knows the story, uh, all my close friends know the story really well. Um, she was dancing kind of like over me and I'm like thinking I'm like, you know, the, like Keanu Reeves in the Matrix and you know, dodging bullets. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't know this one even. You didn't hear this no. story? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So it was, uh, it was quite the display. And <laughs> we had gone to Sammy Hagar's bar and we were drinking at Cabo Wabo. And then we went over to El Squid Row. Had some drinks over there and having a, and this is the first night, the first night. They're not strong. That it was like, yeah, we were going hard. Yeah. Going hard the first night. Yeah. And I um, started leaning back, you know, doing the, the whole Matrix uh, Neo. And what happened was as I was leaning back, all of a sudden my knee goes pop. And I felt like my right kneecap went right behind my knee, right behind my leg. And I just dropped. And everyone's like, uh, they said you look like you just got shot like fell to the ground excuse me <coughs> they held me up helped me up and i knew it was really bad went straight to the doctor the next morning he's like no bueno senor <laughs> and it was no bueno came home checked it out acl was torn oh. and uh after that uh got talked into not doing surgery from an orthopedic surgeon, believe it or not, I said that you can just heal up on its own. It's a big mistake, but in the grand scheme of things, then I focused all on my coaching and I just went full time into coaching and I didn't end up fixing it till 10 or 12 years later. Wow. And, um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I stopped bodybuilding. I did not know that one. <laughs> I did not know that story. That is a very interesting one. Wow. All right. Well, be, ca be careful in Mexico. Be careful in some of those places. <laughs> tequila man <laughs> right out right me out gets you every single time right <laughs> that's yeah. that's how you know uh so you know it was a solid night it's like ah, i started with tequila ended up without an acl <laughs> yeah. like, oh, okay we've all been there yeah and that ended my bodybuilding career wow. at that point and for whatever reason they just the stars aligned and in terms of do not compete anymore yeah because my knee hurt so bad after about four or five years i was like God, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to ever get back on stage yeah. because it became so chronic with, you know, it became arthritic because of the abrasion. You started well, a different the, bodybuilding career though. Well, right then there, I yeah. stopped uh, competing and then I said, okay, well, I'll take a year or two off. Because as it was, there was times where I would, you know, compete every other year because I was busy co coaching and doing all the different things I was doing to be able to try to basically get ahead in my career. And I just felt like at that time, it was very difficult for me to say, okay, let me go back to doing what I love, which is yeah. getting on stage when I have so many people I can help versus just me. Yeah. And I just knew I was always limited genetically. And that was it. 
And that's one of the reasons. Well, the end of that, that kind of topic of an end of a bodybuilding career kind of takes us into our last question, which is, uh, what are your thoughts on the retirement of Flex Lewis? Well, thank God Flex Lewis didn't go to Mexico and was made <laughs> yeah. tequila and didn't end Did not end the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it was on his terms. Yeah, I mean, uh, Flex is a legend. And I feel that Flex, we would have all loved to see Flex on stage with of the course. open guys. And I don't think anybody would have loved it more than him. Yeah. I really don't. People, you know, always talk and they talk crap and they say this and that. But all in all, I really feel that he would have loved to be able to say, hey, look, I want to, I know my best is at 220 or whatever that number is. I'm not going to pretend to even know. But whatever that number was and or could have been, people would have loved to see what that is because it's just like right now where they say Ronnie versus the best Ronnie versus the best Dorian Yates. Everybody would have loved to see the best version of flex next to everybody that's out there. And yeah. as a bodybuilding fan, I'm going to just say it sucks that I don't get to see that because I would have loved it. But at the end of the day, flex has his priorities. He just had another baby. He has businesses to run. He's got other things to do. And he doesn't have anything else to prove. Yeah. It would have just been extra gravy at that point. And so with seven, 212 pound titles on his belt, literally like, you know, notches on his belt. Yeah. It's just one of those things that we've been waiting, waiting, waiting. And we were all hoping that that was going to eventually happen, but I totally understand. And I respect him. I want to say congratulations on having an amazing career flex. Um, and we're going to see you around all the time because, yeah, yeah. you know, or maybe even more now out there in, in the industry because of just through business and through all the different things that he's going to be doing. And, um, and I, I think, you know, I want to say, well done. You had a great career and, you know, I know about family first and I understand that. And I really, that's part of my mantra. And I think that, that he really needs to do that because when you have, especially a newborn, you know, whole point, he had a boy. So he's like, <laughs> now he's like, oh, that's going to be my son, you know, <laughs> you know, he's going to be, so, because he, he was able to yeah. get the girl on the first one and yep. then the second one, and he was like, yes, yep. you know, because the bodybuilding curse is like when you have like Ronnie, when you have like all these girls, right? And it's like, <laughs> da, 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 da. and now he's like, yes, yeah, so true, you know, um, but it's, you know, everyone just watches a happy, healthy baby. They want just yeah, a healthy baby, course. but all in all, it's just, it, it, I, you know, I'm very happy for what it. a career to be proud of. Super. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, what else does he need to be able to prove at this point? It's just at that point, it was just going to be for the fans. And, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously for him too, because he's want to prove that he could do that, but it, you know, the stars didn't align perfectly on that yeah. end, but and he had a great, great career. Definitely. Yeah. So, and then flex, Looking forward to seeing you in Vegas, brother. <laughs> we can go out there and see him. You know, we're going to be out there early. Maybe we'll, we'll come by the gym uh, for the Olympia. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think that's all the questions I got on my That's end. what you got? That's, that's no, all that I got. Was awesome. Yeah, I spoke enough Farsi today. Also. Oh, my yeah, God. I know. That very impressive. Well, very, very we'll impressive. Keep getting better at it. Yeah, that was amazing. Man. <laughs> so, guys, thank you guys so very much. Make sure you put your comments down below. Like, subscribe, do all those great things. Hani Rambod here with Austin, and that's the truth.